Hi, welcome to my living room. This is a ukulele, as you might have known, a staple of the YouTube music scene. This is also a ukulele, however, it has been damaged. My grandmother gave me this ukulele when I was first getting into music. It's one of the first instruments I owned, and it means a lot to me. But through various moves and things like that, the bridge of the ukulele snapped. I figured now is as good a time as any to get it fixed, so I called up my friend and luthier Steven, and he said it would be no problem. So let's do it. All right, I'm in the car on my way to Steven's. I've got the ukulele. It's also summer here in Texas and it's about over 100 degrees. So I'm sweating to death in this car while I'm making this content for you. So like, I don't know, here we go. Hey man. What's up? How are you doing? Good, how are you? Let's go. Sweet. Look at us. I, the interview after I think will be a more like formal thing. Okay. So I, in my mind, have you seen any like Rob Scallon videos or anything? I've seen a couple, yeah. Okay, so it's very like, you're just doing your thing. I'm here wasting time. Okay, you know? cool. So, so <laughs> like, yeah, so I'll just start and yeah, then like- if you, Yeah, if you wanna maybe like walk me through like what you're doing. Cool. But besides that, like it's pretty casual. This is one of the first repairs I learned how to do when I was an apprentice. I apprenticed with one of the, uh, the people at UNT for both strings and winds. And when I was doing string repair, they, a friend of mine told me he had this guitar that had a bridge that like snapped off for a friend of his. And I was talking to my uh, mentor about that. He was like, well, just tell him to bring it in and we'll I'll just like learn how to do it. That's um, cool. Kind of just trial by fire sort of, sort, sort uh -huh. of thing. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is there's gonna be a little bit of glue that's still on here. So we'll just like sand a little bit of that off mm -hmm. and make sure we don't want the adhesive that we're gonna use to bond to any of the glue. Sure, are like glues and stuff, are there like special kinds for instruments or is it sort of like, uh, like puppet making where it's just like you buy like whatever glue? Like there's, a, there's a few different things. I think it kind of comes down to what individual people prefer to use. I really like this Gorilla Wood glue. Mm -hmm. um, I used it to repair uh, a headstock that broke off of a Gibson wow. acoustic guitar, and like that thing is still holding strong. Nice. Um, I've heard a lot that the the glue ends up being a stronger hold than just like if the wood had never broken off really? in the first okay. place. Um, so that's, that's kind of neat. So what we're gonna do here is um, we've got uh, the majority of this glue off, which is great, this old glue that, that has separated. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use a razor and we're gonna just put some some light X's here on the wood. And the reason why we're doing that is it's going to allow the glue to like seep in uh, in these little ridges that we create. Okay. And it's gonna just give it a little bit better hold. So is this the same way you would fix like a guitar bridge or any other sort of like wooden bridge like this? Yeah, for the most part, you know, um, the, the, the tricky thing about guitars is there's so many like different components that can go into them, but for most acoustic guitar bridges, they are gonna be glued on like this. Gotcha. And this is exactly the same process that you would do. Okay. Next, I'll describe what we're gonna do first. We're gonna add some glue to the bridge. We're gonna put it on here. And then I went and bought these clamps. I needed to get some clamps for this, this job. These are gonna hold the bridge in place for the next 24 hours while the glue dries. I think it's kind of funny that these clamps are like big and like heavier, but they were the only size that I could find That's that could reach good. down to the bridge. <laughs> so yeah, I've got these like giant heavy metal clamps that are going to uh, uh, hold this tiny little wooden instrument together. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna stick these in here and they're gonna hold the bridge down and we're gonna create a little buffer on top of the bridge. Um, to help distribute the pressure a little bit more evenly gotcha. and then also to prevent the the metal uh, or any of the components from actually like pressing on the bridge and causing damage to any of the wood too. Mm -hmm. So all right. So we're gonna we're gonna glue. We got some people on TikTok that are saying hello. Get it done. My buddy Case is saying hi right now. What's up, Case? Alright, so we don't need a whole lot. Um, 
I'm going to spread it out just a little bit. Cool. All right, that's going to be more than enough. Um, in fact, I'm going to wipe a little bit off just so we don't have too much uh, squeeze out mm -hmm. whenever we put the clamps on. Yeah, it's really, it's fun to think because like when I look at instruments, I don't really see like just like pieces that are put together, mm -hmm. you know? So it's yeah. like just like how you go from like playing an instrument to like working in like a, a workstation or something. It's just like a different like lens I'm viewing this out of. Totally. It's very interesting. It's always kind of fun. I like to repair instruments and I also like to repair electronics and like video game consoles yeah. and stuff. Like I've been modding. I'm in the middle of modding this Game Boy Advance. Um, and it's I, it's always super fun to open something up like this yeah. and see the internal components and everything like that. You get to peek behind the curtain a little bit and it's kind of <laughs> kind of satisfying. All right, great. So we're going to add this guy right here. Mm -hmm. um, that'll be our buffer. And we're gonna start applying our clamps. I'm excited. And then this just has to sit for, I mean, technically, I think it could be dry in like two or three hours, mm -hmm. um, but it's recommended you wait 24. Sure. I have to get it like tight enough to stay, but loose enough to allow me to adjust it so I can get a second one in here <laughs> on the other side. And it's a little bit of a delicate process, but it's looking good so far. That's why I came to you, the professionalism. Something like that. <laughs> As you can see also, I don't know if the camera can grab it, but there's a little bit of squeeze out right here. We're gonna grab that in just a second. Gotcha. So it's not applying that much pressure, but it's just enough mm -hmm. for this bridge to set, or for the glue to set rather on the bridge. And that's that's pretty much it. The one thing I forgot to grab was a Q-tip to get really get in there and grab some of that <laughs> extra glue. So I'm gonna go do that super fast. No worries. I will be right back. I'll entertain while you're gone. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So we'll grab a little bit of this stuff that's squeezing out here, and then we should be good. I'm gonna nice. check in with TikTok real fast. Yeah, people are agreeing that Gorilla gorilla Glue is the way to go. <laughs> it's it's done me right every time. So interestingly, <laughs> there's an era of Gibson guitars where the, the headstock was built at a certain angle that made it super fragile. So if they fall over, mm -hmm. they will just like snap with, they, they, they cannot take a beating. Gotcha. It's a super common problem. And um, yeah, it's, it's still holding that one Gibson together after a few years now. Yeah, so. So yeah, Gorilla Glue is the way, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but yeah, so these are just gonna sit here for the next day. Fantastic. And then uh, we'll take it off and we'll get it strung up. Yeah, I do really enjoy seeing these just giant clamps. In this it's so silly little, looking. Like, <laughs> normally, you normally- they're so heavy, like they're so much heavier than the ukulele. <laughs> right, like... and I couldn't, I couldn't find the ones that I would typically use, which they're like this U shape. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a lot thinner. They give you a lot more real estate to work with. It's gonna be good as new in no time at all. Fantastic. I don't know how new it's gonna be. I have no idea how old this you live, 40 something years, but. That's amazing. You know, it's got character. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Let's, uh, why don't you introduce yourself first? Okay, well, my name is Steven. Uh, I am a musician and luthier uh, here in uh, the DFW area. I play a lot of like jazz and folk music and then I like to fix people's stringed instruments. Fantastic. All right, here are some questions. I gave these to you before. Right, right? Yeah. Okay, so first question, how did we meet? Uh, so we worked for, well, we met working at a uh, company that uh, hires teachers to teach children uh, and uh, teenagers music. Uh, I started working there actually doing violin repair and then okay. eventually started just freelancing that work and started teaching as well. Um, and I, I heard you like killing it in the practice room all the time. And I was like, <laughs> I have you. to be friends with this guy. So That's, and then I think the other time, like, cause we had interacted and I'm just really awkward around people. So I was like going to the library. Remember That's you, right, were, yeah. you worked at the library and mm -hmm. you were like, we work together. And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
And look at us now. Here we are, <laughs> shooting content. That's right. <laughs> what is your primary instrument slash what other instruments do you play? Uh, so my primary would be guitar. That's what I went to uh, UNT <coughs> for at my undergrad in jazz okay. performance. But uh, as a teenager, I really liked folk instruments and like bluegrass music, especially like if you know Chris Thiele, like pretty much anything he does uh, with like Nickel Creek or the Punch Brothers or any of that stuff, I like fell in love with that whole crowd of musicians that are doing the like contemporary bluegrass thing. Sure. So I picked up a mandolin and I picked up a banjo. Uh, and then that eventually also led me into this other instrument called pedal steel guitar. I don't know if you can see it, but there's one sitting right over here. And uh, that is like this crazy complicated instrument that uses like your knees and your feet to bend the strings and That's change really the chords. And um, I've been focusing a lot on that and mostly guitar lately, but I still pick up gigs for other people on other instruments too sometimes. I like doing the sideman thing, you know? How do you get into fixing instruments? So when I was a kid and just starting to play guitar, I got really into this weird guitar player named Buckethead. Okay. Uh, he was this guy who, he's like an anonymous musician. He wears a white mask, he has long curly hair, he's super tall and lanky, and he wears a KFC bucket on his head, and he plays this like weird industrial metal, you know, music with atonal fast guitar solos. This, this it's like <laughs> super weird stuff to be into. When this you're... is a side note, but that sounds like a lot of accordion players. Yeah. It's already like already a weird thing. So yeah. Like, what if we just like make it worse? Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> yeah. So he has this like whole lore and everything. Anyway, I got really into him and he has this, he had these like giant red arcade buttons on his guitar. And whenever he pressed them, it would like mute his guitar signal. And so what he would do is he would like tap them really fast to get this like really weird glitchy sort Sort of that's sound. Kind of fun. Yeah, and I was Whoa. like, that's really neat. And so I told my dad, like, what is he doing? What is that thing called? Can I get that on my guitar? Does my guitar do that? Uh, and we took it to a luthier uh, in town in San Antonio where I was growing up. And yeah, they just like drilled a hole and like connected some wires to a switch. And then all of a sudden I had this thing called a kill switch on my guitar as well. Get it done. I thought that was so cool. And that, I think that was one of the sparks where I was like, oh, I can just like learn how to do this. I can just like get a drill, I can get files, I can uh, get wire cutters and a screwdriver and like start figuring these things out. So um, that's kind of like what sparked the interest. And then a few years later, I got to build a ukulele kit, um, which came with uh, most of the parts. And then you had to just get some like sandpaper and mm -hmm. some, some tools and, and stuff like that. And then you got to put together a whole ukulele, which was really cool. That's cute. Did um, it come with Gorilla Glue? Uh, it did not come with the Gorilla okay. Glue. I had, to go, trash I had to go buy the Gorilla Glue. <laughs> they, they, uh, they had that written in the instructions. Okay, good, good, good. So, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was great. Uh, and that was such a great experience. I had a, a mentor for that um, to kind of like guide me through a little bit. And nice. uh, just from then on, I was just kind of like obsessed with doing it, tinkering with my own guitars and trying to get them to feel and sound good, as good as they possibly yeah. could. Because I think just the slightest bit of resistance can prevent you from wanting to practice. For sure. And when you can like change that, you have, when you, it doesn't take a lot of skills, I think, to like learn how to do that and make those adjustments yourself. And then all of a sudden your guitar or instrument can feel super, super good. And you just like want to play it all the more, you know? If there's anybody that's like wanting to get into this thing, I, I suggest starting there. Like find a, a, an electronics kit that will teach you how to like make a guitar pedal or build a ukulele or something like that. Very and fun. find somebody who is handy with tools that can kind of guide you through the process mm -hmm. and make sure you don't like make any mistakes that will like ruin the thing. Um, and like, that's, it's such a great way to start. And that's, that's what got me there, you know, and now I've got a whole bench and all these tools and everything and we're doing this, you know, so. Now we're here. Yeah. <laughs> you talked about this a little bit at the table. So you sort of got that spark. You started fixing things. You apprenticed with somebody or yeah. people, right? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. The apprenticeship thing <laughs> was a little funny. Um, I apprenticed with several different people and all of the luthiers that I've met are kind of like cranky old dudes. <laughs> um, and one of the reasons I've discovered that is, is being a luthier doesn't really pay super well. And it can also be really, really hard and time consuming work. Gotcha. So um, that's why I ended up switching to kind of freelancing it 
Uh, at one point, I was pretty bent on making it like my entire career, but I apprenticed with enough people to learn that, and then learn myself that like there are some jobs that you're just gonna sink like dozens and dozens of hours into, and maybe mm -hmm. make a hundred bucks on it if oh, that, wow. you know. Um, and that is a crappy position to find yourself in. So I figured I would focus more on other things, but then keep the luthier stuff on the side and like fix my own guitars, help out friends when they needed it and mm -hmm. stuff like that. What's the craziest repair you have done? The craziest repair that I've done, I was thinking about this one. Um, I'm, I don't know. I may, I may not have an answer for this. Uh, I don't know if I've done anything that is like super, super crazy. Gotcha. Maybe like the opposite. That what's like the most standard repair? Like what's something every every luthier knows how to do? That's a good question. Um, I'd say uh, if you're getting started, like one of the best things that you can do is just learn how to set up a guitar or learn how to, I mean, pretty much any instrument is going to need some basic maintenance mm -hmm. and learn how to do that, that maintenance and learn what, uh, what minor tools that you need to do that. But a guitar is a great start because you don't need a whole lot. Um, you just like really need some, some wire cutters and a tuner and an Allen wrench, uh, and maybe like a gauge to tell like where the string, how, like how far the strings are off of the fretboard. Gotcha. So you really need like four or five things and like that's pretty much it. You can mm -hmm. find a lot of kits for like 20 bucks. Okay. So well. doing like guitar setups, whether or not you play guitar too, that's also like something you can learn how to do and uh, is a great place to start because pretty much any luthier will do that. And that's the majority of the work I get is people just need me to set their instruments up real quick. It's like feeling weird and they don't know why. So I will go in and just kind of tinker with it and um, make it make it feel good again and the most satisfaction i get is whenever people get their guitar back and they start playing it and they're like oh my god it feels like it's new like what did you do um that is such a great feeling to be able to like give people an opportunity to fall in love with their instrument mm -hmm. again you know like like it was whenever they first put brought it off the wall or whatever that's awesome yeah that's awesome where can people find you what's your like social media tags uh what what projects are you working on yeah so um, i'm doing sideman stuff all the time in the dfw area um i stream a lot on tiktok you can find me on tiktok at pokechon that's p-o-k-e-c-h-o-n uh on instagram i am at super steve and that's spelled like soup that you eat uh, but I'll just like post like, you know, photography or, uh, I lately I've been streaming like repairs that I've been doing on TikTok. Uh, and I also like to do these, uh, folky video game music covers. So, um, you can find those on TikTok and Instagram as well. All right, man. Well, thanks again for having me. It's a lovely space. Yeah. And, uh, that's it. Cool. And here it is. So I just got the ukulele back from Steven and it looks good as new. These are nylon strings, so they're gonna take a little time to adjust and stay in tune, but overall it looks gorgeous and I'm super excited to have it back. He ended up using the strings that I gave too, so these strings and this ukulele, I have no idea how old they could be, but they're definitely on the older side and it's a really nice memory that I have back, a memory of my grandmother and I sharing music together. Um, from a long time ago, so I'm super excited. In honor of the ukulele being fixed, I've decided to write a song featuring the ukulele, which will appear on an EP that I'm releasing, hopefully sometime in the next few months. It just depends on how fast I can mix the songs and get it out and all that stuff. In the meantime, if you like this video, make sure to give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe for more videos, and hit the notification bell while you're at it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.